My name is John Blackwell. I'm an ag engineer. I've done a number of projects for ACR over the years. What we're talking about today is the Happy Cedar project, which started in 2002. I'm At that stage, I was working for CSIRO Land and Water from Griffith. Uh, I am now attached to Charles Sturt University as an adjunct professor. I was always interested in agriculture from my youth. I spent all of my schooling in Kenya and Rhodesia, and my uncle had a farm in Rhodesia, and I just loved farming, and I thought that's what I wanted to do. So I did an agricultural degree in Britain and then agricultural engineering, and subsequently came to Australia in 1967. I was heading back to Rhodesia, and I stayed here ever since, which is the best thing I never did go back to Rhodesia. The challenge that the Happy Cedar addressed was the very fact that millions of hectares of rice straw, which is the most recalcitrant straw, difficult to handle. You want to plant a, a wheat crop into that within the shortest possible time, but two weeks is probably the minimum they were able to do it, unless they burnt the rice straw. So the world over, not only the Indo-Gangetic Plain, but all over the world, rice is burnt. I mean, many straws are burnt because it's the simplest solution. You strike a match and it's gone. But that creates huge problems, particularly in India and Pakistan, where many deaths every year are attributed to the smog that is created when you burn this damn stuff. The challenge was for ACR, they, they instigated a small pro on a large project with Dr. Liz Humphreys, who was my colleague, on white rice wheat on beds in India. And Tony Fisher was the project manager here, and he said to Liz, we've just got to solve this problem, otherwise we're wasting our time. Liz asked me, and that very night, it was, this is true, I woke with a eureka moment, not quite as important as Archimedes perhaps, but oh, I thought, surely someone's thought of that. Next day we searched the literature, no one had thought of it as far as we could tell, so I, I got out a provisional, two provisional patents actually for two embodiments of what I'd envisaged, and came back to Tony and said, this is what I think we could do. And he said, well, by gee, there is a, a harvester, a forage harvester in Ludiana. Maybe you could go and make one. So I said, well, I'd love to. So apparently the first ACR project for the Happy Cedar was $5,000 for me to go to Ludiana and build one at the Punjab Agriculture University. And that's how it started. I realized that direct drilling was common in India. It had become common. It wasn't originally, but like all over the world, uh, direct drilling was important. So you didn't have to plow, you didn't have to cultivate. You could actually sow directly into stubble. I thought to myself, okay, so direct drill works. What if you presented the direct drill with a clear piece of ground, having lifted the straw temporarily? How would you do that? Well, a, a forage harvester literally cuts everything in front of it, lifts it, and blows it into a cart. So don't have a cart. Modify the harvester, the forage harvester. Put a drill behind it, a direct drill behind it. You've got a happy cedar. It worked, but it had fundamental problems, one of which was in heavy straw load. All this straw had to be blown through the air before it landed on the soil. So if the wind was coming back at you, you got covered. It wasn't very pleasant to operate, but worst was the fact that if it did blow left or right on your track, then the next strike that you took, you couldn't actually see very easily where you were. So that was problematic. And to overcome that, I have to give all credit to Desmesh Engineering Works. Uh, they're just outside Ludiana, three Singh brothers, beautiful, beautiful family firm, and they took up the challenge of making happy cedars. So they made the original ones, then they made two or three small modifications to make them more compact, which were very, very neat, very good, very good design, but still had the problem of blowing. And then about five years after they'd been manufacturing these, I got an email saying, We've solved the blowing problem, John. What do you think? And I said, I don't know, maybe double chop somehow. I don't understand what the question is. And they said, well, we want you to come and see. So I went back to India to see the, they called it a turbo happy cedar to give it another name. 
And they took me out, we, I landed at uh, Ludiana, they took me out middle of the night under torchlight and lights from their car. They put this machine into the straw and sure enough, no blowing, it could go directly through eight to 10 tons of straw and sow wheat. So that was really, they deserve a lot of credit for that because that was the big breakthrough which gave us the machine that is now being manufactured widely in India and sold. Maybe 60,000 of them now available. So the question is, how then do you attack the rice straw with normal conventional tillage and everything? So you've, you've really got to, first of all, chop it many times, incorporate it, and during that process, which is about seven operations, tractor operations, they usually like to irrigate once. That slows you down a lot, but it helps the breakdown. And a minimum of two weeks from harvest, this is with a combine harvester, so that the, the straw is all left in the paddock, both standing straw and all the cut straw. Up in Australia, up to 14 tons per hectare. In India, probably maxes out at about eight to 10 tons. This is a huge problem to get to a seed bed. But the two weeks are important for yield of your subsequent wheat crop. So uh, the fact is, if you could gain those two weeks, is what we attempted to do, it would be huge for yield and cost. Think of the cost. Seven tractor operations are saved, one irrigation is saved, and you increase the yield potential of the following wheat. The farmers in India were skeptical about the say, oh, no, 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 it's silly, we've got to have a clean seedbed. In fact, that was the problem for direct drilling with the world over. Everyone thought you had to have a seedbed. Whereas, in fact, if you sow into an undisturbed soil, as long as you've treated it well to get to that stage, then it's, in fact, better. It saves you a lot of money, saves you a lot of time, and there is no yield penalty. Every farmer who uses it sees the benefit because he gains those two weeks. He sees in his first crop, it may be, if he's done it well, not a yield penalty. So every time uh, Sidhu, who was my colleague in 2003, who really took it into PAU. PAU, the Punjab Agriculture University, was a bit reticent itself to take it up because they had other ideas of how to approach this problem none of which have worked, but that's fine. This is the only one, to my knowledge, that has worked, the happy cedar approach. And uh, all of Sidhu's trials, the farmers, they only have to see it once, and they get happy. I think that's why ACR was set up, and it has worked. Because if you bring two scientists together, as long as they're not too egotistical, we can usually get a synergy and get something out. And that's definitely happened with the happy. It's, it's, brought, it's made a few uh, careers in India. It's fantastic. So that was all thanks to those initial fundings from ACR. I think ACR in all my ventures has helped take that next step, i.e. I have an idea, how can we take it to the people who need it? And ACR, first of all, shows us the people who need it. You look at the world of agriculture and say, well, these are problems. How do we address them?